Hello fellow engineers, welcome back. Our web series has progressed quite a lot now and we have discussed in our all three previous videos everything about low noise amplifiers for radio astronomy. Of course a room, temp room temperature low noise amplifiers but I believe most of the engineers watching those videos got a fair idea what exactly a low noise amplifier is and how it got characterized. So as such, uh, if we think of our front end system, we manage to receive the signals from outer space. We have received the waves into our through our feed horn. We have converted those waves into a coaxial cable signal. And also with the help of low noise amplifier, we have amplified it. So as such, uh, the front end system is complete. <clears throat> but for radio astronomy, we have to add some more features to it to make good observations of a radio source. And one such feature for radio astronomy receivers is to inject a reference noise into your system. The injection of referen reference noise for radio astronomy systems is quite common and one of the advantage of doing that is because you could measure the system temperature by using or with the knowledge of the noise diode temperature which you are injecting in your system. So this video is mainly about some theoretical aspects of uh, how would you inject the noise into your system and then of course a practical demonstration with a realized noise source and uh, how the noise switching is done etc. So let's start with a very basic concept that we have to add certain amount of noise into our system but before the low noise amplifier. This is usually done before the low noise amplifier because as the temperature varies, as the time elapses, there is a possibility that gain of the low noise amplifier might vary a bit. The noise temperature of your complete system or a system temperature might also drift a little bit and you have to take care of all these drifting parameters and try to calibrate them out during your observation. So simplest way is to have some sort of noise source. Hopefully it has a white noise type of characteristics. It means it is giving equal amount of noise power for entire frequency band of interest. And somehow it is get, getting added to your signal which is coming from your feed horn before the low noise amplifier. So let's assume a hypothetical case that right now I have my front end system mounted in some sort of big reflector and I am looking in one particular region of the sky where as such there is no radio astronomical source is present. But still the antenna will receive some noise. Now if your noise source is also there, the noise source uh, noise will also get added to antenna noise. And the third factor which will also get added is the noise from the low noise amplifier itself. All these three factors will get amplified and you will have an amplified output as noise power at the output of low noise amplifier. This is usually a usual way to do it but we have to think of practical implementation of this particular concept. To do that Typically what you have is a noise diode or a noise module. Many There are commercial vendors who supply a noise diode or a noise module so that you could simply give a DC power to that module and it would generate a white noise for given excess noise ratio. So that is the noise source. So typically it's a noise diode which is biased in proper fashion and then you have white noise at the output of the diode. That you have to add uh, with your antenna noise before the LN. <clears throat> but naturally we want to observe with, uh, we have to observe particular radio source with our instrument, instrument. So adding noise all the time is definitely not desirable because it will completely degrade your system temperature and the sensitivity of your telescope is lost. So somehow you, you should have a clever option to turn on or off the noise source such that whenever there is a need you will apply, give a control signal and the noise 
diode is fired and you have an added noise into your system and the, when the control signal is absent, the noise will simply disappear and what you will have is simply a system temperature that is the antenna temperature and the receiver temperature. So therefore, between the noise source and a block which adds noise, noise before your low noise amplifier, you need an RF switch which simply passes the radio frequency or the white noise generated by your noise source towards the low noise amplifier or it switches it off. And practically, the addition block to add the noise to, to your LNA is done by a component referred as directional coupler. A directional coupler is definitely a passive component and typically it is defined by its term called as directivity or the coupling factor. It means for the coupled port, whatever power you have applied, some fraction of that power would end up into your LNA. And that coupling factor you could decide and you could design the directional coupler accordingly. So these coupling factors varies 10 dB coupling, 20 dB coupling, 25 dB coupling, 30 dB coupling and so, so on. So just for the explanation, let's say that the coupling factor is about 20 dB for the directional coupler. So for the coupled port, we will add the noise and there is a fourth port for the directional coupler where it is terminated with 50 ohm load and that port is referred as isolated port. You could find more theory about directional coupler in any uh, basic microwave engineering textbook. So I won't go into detail of that. But when it comes to radio astronomy, I have to sh give few comments uh, with respect to directional coupler for radio astronomy in instrumentation. So while designing a directional coupler, for radio astronomy instrumentation, one has to take care of the fact that it is before low noise amplifier and any loss added by your directional coupler is going to degrade your system noise temperature and it is going to degrade your sensitivity. So having very very low loss for a through path is one of the important criteria for while designing a directional coupler for radio astronomy application. Similarly, a high isolation say 40 dB or better is also desirable and the coupling factor really depends upon your design and what kind of noise diode which you are using and how much injection of noise you want before the LNA. So for this particular application we have about 25 dB coupling for a noise diode having excess ratio of 33 dB. But this is just one polarization. We still haven't talked about the orthogonal or the second polarization into, your, into our system. And we have to inject noise for both the polarizations. So one way to do that is to add a power splitter after your RF switch so that whenever the control signal is given to the uh, RF switch, the noise source uh, is passed to the next stage and then a Wilkinson power divider would split the noise power equally on two ports, one of which goes to left hand circular polarization and the other goes to right hand circular polarization. So in this way, you will have equal noise power for two orthogonal polarizations getting injected before the LNAs of the respective polarizations. So I have talked enough and uh, definitely I, have, I will show the actual practical implementation of this. But before that, I could just show you a picture of the real system. Let's see. So in this particular picture, you could see that at the bottom of the plate on the right hand side, there is a noise source. Above the noise source, there is a RF switch. On top of the RF, RF switch, there is a power splitter, a Wilkinson one. And then from that power splitter, one cable goes to the directional coupler of say left hand circularly polarized LNA and the other cable goes to the directional coupler of right hand circularly polarized LNA. So this is how it is realized in practice. So now I will take this uh, particular modules and as usual I will assemble everything on the desk along with the spectrum analyzer and we will try to understand what is 
the power level for the white noise which we are generating, how it, it is getting switched and so on. So stay tuned, I'll be right back in few minutes. Hello again. In earlier part of video, we have discussed a little bit about noise sources and why they are used in radio astronomy receivers. So now it's about practical demonstration of noise sources. So what we have here is like in our previous video, we have the power supply and required microcontroller unit. Followed by that, we have here this as a noise module. This has a noise diode inside. So when turned on, it radiates some noise. It gives out uh, power as a function of frequency. And if it's a white noise, hopefully the power spectrum is very, very, very flat at the end of this connector. Followed by that, what we have here is a RF switch. And then by controlling the input at the RF switch, we could either decide to turn on the transmission from the output of noise source to the next connector or turn it off or apply some modulation on it. While afterwards, we just have a simple power splitter and this power splitter would give 3 dB equal split of power between these two connectors so that when this unit used in our radio astronomy receiver, it will give exactly the same power on both polarizations. So as soon as you turn on your noise source and turn on your RF switch, you will see equal power on both polarizations during your observations. So how we are going to demonstrate this? First, I will turn on this RF switch and we will try to observe what is the power spectral density of the noise source. At present, we have connected the output of the power combiner to the spectrum analyzer, while the second port of the power combiner is terminated in a 50 ohm load. So as you could see on the screen, uh, since right now everything is turned off, Typically, we have a noise floor of the instrument ranging between minus 114 dBm to minus 111, 110 dBm in the frequency range of 1 to 2 gigahertz. This is already a very, very low number and for to achieve that, one should have turned on the pre-amplifier feature of your spectrum analyzer so that you could have very low noise floor on, the, on your spectrum analyzer and then you could detect small signals above this noise floor. So in this case, we are going to detect noise, which is coming out of this noise source. So let me turn on my noise source. By issuing proper commands. Okay, and I hit refresh screen here. So that you will be able to see it better. Now see, our spectrum level, which was initially about minus 113, minus 112 dBm, has gone up to minus 102 dBm. And it is staying very, very flat around minus 102 dBm. One could say within a dB or so. So one could say that the power coming out of the noise source, which, which is in front of you, is very, very flat. And practically, we could call it as a white noise. So next thing is to see how this white noise can be modulated for observation purposes. Okay, and next thing is to modulate the noise by applying proper bias to this particular RF switch. And the modern RF switches, they work in very simple fashion that you could have either bit zero, which is zero volt, of course, and if it's a CMOS switch, you just pull the level up to 3.3 volt and you have digital high. Or if, you, if it's a TTL, you have to pull it up to 5 volt. So just by giving proper 1 and 0 bit stream to this particular RF switch, it is then possible to modulate the power spectrum at the output of our power, power combiner. So to start with, I will give a duty cycle of 50%. So half the time the noise source is on and half the time it is off. Actually, the noise source is always on. So it is giving constant power all the time. But the RF switch decides whether to transmit that power to the next power combiner or not. So now let me hit the refresh screen button for the spectrum analyzer. 
now it's very clear now in the same plot what you could see when the noise source is turned off by the rf switch actually the rf switch gets turned off here basically so no transmission occurs and we just see the noise floor of the instrument while when the rf switch is on and in this case it is 50% of the time on and 50% of the time off you have modulated noise coming out of it and that's why on the spectrum analyzer it appears like a square wave with frequency which i have set in my program about 10 hertz but this can be changed also the duty cycle can be changed so one could as per the need of astronomy or radio astronomy observation could set the appropriate duty cycle and the frequency of the noise source switching and use the reference noise injection to calibrate your receiver better to get the gain drifts out of your system etc so with this uh, we will conclude this video and in this video we have practically demonstrated what is the white noise and how it is generated using a noise source and we have shown its measurements i hope you have liked this video and in next video we try we will try to cover other part of the front end system till then see you